Um, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my Knights 2021 season review. Uh, yeah, like the past two, not really much to say, so let's just jump straight into it. So again, like the last two, I'm not going to read the stats. You can see them on the on the screen, either there or there. All right. But the key one I want to talk about is the 76 tries scored. Because that is the second least amount of tries scored by a team in the NRL this season. You know, the only team that scored less tries than the Knights this season was the Bulldogs. All right. And so, how can a team make the finals... When they score that few, when you know, when they score that few tries, like, you know, it just doesn't. For me, it doesn't make any sense. Like, the only thing that it means is that the games that they won, they decimated in. All right, you know, and then the games that they lost, sorry, sorry, the games that they won were close, and then the games that they lost, they just got decimated in. Because right, what they conceded 102 tries, so that's essentially 30 tries more conceded than they scored. Right, like that is insane that a team made the grand not grand final made the finals with you know try scoring stats of that level. Like it's ridiculous. It's crazy. I I don't understand it. Like I don't think it's a like I just I don't you know in my lifetime at least I can't think of a time where it's happened. Where a team has scored that little tries, you know, second least amount of tries in the se- in a season, as a team, and still made finals, like, for me that's unheard of. It's ridiculous. I just I don't get it. Like you look at the team and it's like, you know, they got good players. You know, Kalen Ponga, Mitchell Pearce, uh, I think Lachlan Fitzgibbon, fantastic player, Saifidi brothers, right? You know, all fantastic players who on their day are incredible. Which are, you know we'll probably talk about most of them in a minute, but um. Yeah, I just I don't get it. Like I don't, I, just, I don't know if it's I don't know if it was a coaching thing, if it was a um like if it was just a player mentality thing where if they'd start losing they'd just throw in the towel and give up immediately. Right? But yeah, I just I don't know what it is. Like cuz if you go and look at the stats, like you know, their tries scored and conceded were evenly spread out across the whole game, you know. There was never like a specific time frame in a game where the Knights were either Scoring all their points or conceding all their points. It was pretty evenly spread throughout the whole game. So, I really don't know what it was. Like, it, it just... It's actually mind-blowing to me that something like that has happened. Right? Because, you know, I think they are a good enough team to make finals. Like, I predicted them to finish eighth. So, you know, I thought they would make finals. But, yeah, to make it the way they did is actually very surprising. Right? And I think one of the reasons it's gone down like that is this first bloke we're going to talk about right now, the coach, Adam O'Brien. I think it's Adam O'Brien. Yeah, so um, the Knights are his first official coaching gig where he is in charge. Uh, do I think he's a good coach? I think he's decent. I think he's okay. Uh, again, because he is starting off fresh, you know, he's obviously going to struggle here and there. So, you know, I'm not surprised by the past two... I think he's been coaching there for two seasons now, so I'm not surprised by the past two seasons he's had there. But, you know, I think he's decent. Um, I think the thing that really plays into his favour is that he was the understudy to Bellamy for a while there at the Storm when they were at their peak. Like, obviously, they're still very strong, the Storm, but, you know, when they were really at their peak, you know, Adam O'Brien was there alongside Bellamy helping him out. So he got to learn from, in my opinion, the best. Right? And then after, <clears throat> after the Storm, he went to the Roosters. Right? And I think at the Roosters is where um, the issues have sort of fallen into line for Adam O'Brien. And what I mean by that is, at the Roosters, he was an attacking coach, right? You know, from what I understand and from what I've read, he didn't work with the team defensively in any way. So majority of his real coaching experience is as an attacking coach, right? And so I think that's why you see um, the Knights' stats the way they are, where they've conceded so many tries as opposed to scored, right? Because he knows how to set up an attack. He knows how to get a free-flowing attack going because he was an inaugural part of the Roosters' 2019 Grand Final. I think it was 2019 Grand Final. Yeah, 2019 Grand Final win. He was an inaugural part of that, right, you know, as their attacking coach. So he knows how to set an offense, but... I don't think he knows how to set a defense. And I think that's what's cost 
well not cost because obviously they made finals but you know I think that's what's caused the Knights like just discrepancies that they've got because you know you usually teams would have sort of like a couple options in defense you know like if they notice that the team they're versing is shifting it wide really quickly or something like you know the coach will get on the mic and say all right switch to this type of defense where we're going to slide defense or something you know something like that I don't think Adam O'Brien has that yet which is why I think they conceded so many tries because yeah the games they lost they got pumped yeah, because they just didn't know how to defend and you know it wasn't like they were getting pumped by unique different plays every single time you know majority of the points they conceded well majority of the tries they conceded sorry were all from like the same set piece over and over and over again right so I just I don't think Adam O'Brien knew how to um structure his defense to take not take advantage but you know um I guess deal with those scenarios Right. But again, you know, he's a young he's a young coach, he's only been head coach for two seasons. So, you know, give him a bit of time, I think he could do that. I think next year if the Knights <clears throat> can bring in a real good defensive structure coach, I think that would really help him out. It would sort of teach him along the way. So that'd be really good for him. But yeah. Overall decent coach. I think he needs like I said, I think he needs to work on his defense, defensive structures, but overall I think he's pretty good. Alright. Uh first player we're gonna talk about, Bradman Best. I think he is a fantastic player. I think he's one of the best centers in the competition uh, on his day, I'll say. I don't think he's consistent enough yet, but that is also due to injury. I know he has a few injury problems. But yeah, um, on his day, one of the best centers in the comp, he's, his attack is devastating. Like you know, It sounds a bit slack to say, but for a bit of a bigger body out at centers, he's quick, he is rapid. Like He will not only steamroll you but then outrun everyone else trying to catch up to him. You know, like, he, he is a phenomenal player. And if he can get the right coaching, he could go on to be one of the best centers in the game. Whether he will get that coaching at the Knights, I'm not 100% sure. I know they've got Joey Johns going there next season, so that'll be fantastic for him. I think Danny Badiris is helping there as well. So that can help Bradman Best sort of, like, learn how to work around the ruck as a center and run support lines and stuff like that. So that'll be great for him. But yeah, if he can... If he can stay away from injuries and keep developing, by all means, he will be one of the best centers in the game, in my opinion. He's a fantastic player, fantastic young player. All right, next is uh, Lachlan Fitzgibbon. Um, another underrated player, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, I don't think he's the be all end all of, like, you know, second rollers in the comp, but I think he's one of those players that just, he does his job and he does it well. But no one ever really mentions it. Like, you know, for a second row, he scores a lot of tries, you know? Like, you know, he makes a lot of big plays. He makes a lot of crucial tackles, a lot of crucial, you know, a lot of crucial runs to get meters. Yeah, I think Lachlan Fitzgibbing, fantastic player that I just, in my, yeah, in my opinion, doesn't get the um, credit he deserves for what he brings to the Knights. Because, you know, you get the players like Ponga. You know, usually Ponga's the one throwing the pass to Fitzgibbing to hit that hole, you know, so... Nine times out of ten, because Pong is the hot property, everyone will be like, oh, Kalen Pong, a water pass, water play, rah, 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 rah. When, you know, no one says a word about the amazing line that Fitzgibbon's run to hit that hole at speed, you know. So, yeah, I think Fitzgibbon, phenomenal player, very underrated in my opinion. All right. Uh, he will be a... I could see him being a future captain of the Knights. I think he has that leadership quality. He's, he's put the team on his back a few times that I've seen. Yeah, fantastic player. <clears throat> Right, next is the uh, farewell player, I guess, Mitchell Pearce. Um, I think Origin killed Mitchell Pearce, or at least his um, reputation. Like, I think at an NRL level, he is one of the best halfbacks the NRL has had, at least in my opinion. Right, like, I think, <clears throat> yeah, I think at club level, he is phenomenal. But he just... I don't know why. I, he just... He couldn't take that um, final step up to origin. Like, I know he played for Australia a couple of times, which is good for him. But, yeah. Like, it's... I don't know. He just... He couldn't take that step up to origin. And the reason I think that is... I think... Um, I think Pierce is definitely a player that is built on structure. Where, like, if the structure's in place... He is so good at organizing and working that structure. Like, I think he does that better than anyone else. The only person I think that's ever done it better than him 
at least in my time watching NRL, was Cooper Cronk. Uh, but yeah, like Mitchell Pearce, I think he was a fantastic game manager, a f- fantastic organiser. <clears throat> but he just, I don't know, for some reason at Origin, he just couldn't do it. I'm assuming because he just didn't have combinations with the players around him. He didn't know how they played, you know. Like, you know, sort of stuff like that, I would guess. But yeah, um, fantastic player. It's a shame to see him go. I actually really wanted him to come to the Bulldogs just for a season. To have Burton at six, uh, Pierce at seven, and have Burton learning off of Pierce because I think you know, like I said, I think Pierce is a phenomenal player. But yeah, um, unfortunate to see him go. I hope he does well in the Super League. But yeah, <clears throat> again, not an underrated player, but definitely a unappreciated player. I'll say. Like I think the club that he was at loved him at the time. Like I know the Roosters fans loved him when he was there. The Knights fans loved him when he was there. But I, you know, around the rest of the league, everyone was sort of just like, oh yeah, it's Mitchell Pearce, whatever. Like, I just I don't think they gave him the respect he deserved just because he never really properly succeeded at that Origin level. But you know, there's a lot of players that haven't succeeded at that Origin level that are still great players. But you know, yeah, it is what it is. Obviously, he's off the Super League now, so you know, wish him all the best over there. Uh, next is Kalen Ponga. Uh, this might be a controversial opinion, but. I think he's a bit full of himself. Don't get me wrong. Fantastic player. Incredible player. But I think he's um, fallen into his own hype a bit. Uh, and then, like... So, the moments where he's just playing. Right? Where he does... Where, he, like, you know... You can tell mentally he's he's switched on. He's mentally all there. He's phenomenal. But there are times where, like, you know... Maybe in the media or something... Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. You know, maybe in the media or something, something will have been said about him. You know, maybe like, oh, he, he didn't do this last week, or he didn't do that, or he did this too much, or he did that. And I think in those moments, he lets it get to him a bit too much, because you can see there are times where, you know, one week, he might pass the ball a lot. But then the next week, maybe because in the media, they said, oh, he didn't run as much as usual. He'd start running the ball a lot instead of passing it. So... I think he needs to find that happy medium where he just says, you know, screw the media, screw everyone else, I'm going to play my way. You know, because that's when he plays at his best. When he gets the ball in his hands, when he, you know, does that little goose step on the outside and burns him on the outside and creates opportunities for people on his outside. Like, that's what he's best at. That's what he does. But, yeah, I think he just, he lets people get to his head. And, yeah, if he can, if he can sort that out for himself, you know, he will be probably one of the, you know, he will probably be the best fullback in the NRL. You know, apart from, like, you know, well, sorry, he could be the best fullback in the NRL, apart from, like, you know, the likes of Turbo and, um, Teddy. <clears throat> yep. Uh, next is the Saifidi brothers. Off the top of my head, I can't think of a better brother pairing that are forwards. I should say specifically that are forwards. Yeah, because for me personally, the Morris brothers are a better, you know, brothers pairing. No, that's just me personally, not just because they are the Bulldogs. I think they were just fantastic players in general, but that's that's for a different video. But yeah, the Saifidi brothers, I think they are fantastic together. I think they, you know, obviously they're brothers, you know, they work fantastically together. They, um, so many times <clears throat> the Knights have sort of been down and out in a situation and one of them has put the team on their back and made a 20, 25 metre run, right? You know, like both of them fantastic players. I think both of them should be playing Origin. I think only Daniel's playing Origin at the moment. I don't think his brother... Is playing Origin yet, or it's the other way around? I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's Daniel that plays Origin, is it? I don't know. But yeah, both of them phenomenal players, incredible players, and um, yeah, like, excuse me, I'm sorry. Oh. sorry, excuse me. But yeah, so many times, like I said, they put the team on their back. They just like. They're just animals. They're freaks, both of them. They are incredible players. And I would, you know... I'd hate to see them get broken up and go to separate clubs because I think they just... They play so well together. They play off the back of each other so well. Yeah, fantastic. You know, fantastic duo. All right, and the last player is Connor Watson. I think this is going to be a huge loss for the Knights. I don't think the impact he has on them is fully understanded. Like, you know, he's just like... He's just like that workhorse that comes on off the bench for them and just like... 
you know, switches the game. He switches a gear, you know, switches something, and they just they take off from there, you know. But yeah, obviously he's going to the Roosters. I think that's a fantastic pickup for the Roosters. I think Connor Watson is a phenomenal player. I think he should have been starting this season. I think he should have been the starting 13, but I'm pretty sure for most of the comp, he was off the bench, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure he was off the bench, and then Kurt Mann was the one that started, I think. I could be wrong in that. But either way, I think, yeah, Connor Watson, phenomenal player. There were so many times where he would just sort of, like, flip a switch, and the whole game would change. All right, excellent player. Fantastic pickup for the Roosters. Yeah, phenomenal player. All right, and then my overall thoughts of the season are... Uh, like I said at the start, it's expected. I thought they'd finish 8th. Obviously, they did one better. They came 7th. But yeah, so pretty much expected season. You know, I thought they'd be that 7th, 8th you know, position. <clears throat> uh, like I said before, how the hell can a team make the finals with having the you know, the, the second least amount of tries scored in a season? Like That is just that, that boggles my mind. It baffles me. It's insane. I can't believe it. It's crazy. But like I said, I think with the few things I've said about like Adam O'Brien, for example, with the issues with their defensive structures and all that, I think that's what led to it, really. Because, you know, the games they won, they grinded them out, they got the wins, so that shows he does know how to set up an attack and he knows how to set up, a, you know, the offensive structures, but obviously he doesn't know how to do defense yet, and I think that's, what, that's why we see the stats we see. But yeah, it still just boggles my mind how they made finals with so few tries. <coughs> and then the final one is... Uh, the final thing is, how far will they go next season with all the players they've lost? Like, obviously, they've lost Mitchell Pearce. They've lost Connor Watson. I know they've lost a few others. I can't think of who they are off the top of my head. But I know they've lost a couple of others. Right? They've lost key players for their system. And the biggest one for me to fix is Mitchell Pearce. Like, don't, I think Clifford is a good player. But he's not a team leader, in my opinion. Not yet, at least. He's got that potential, but not yet. Uh, so a lot of pressure is now going to fall on the likes of Ponga. And he's already got enough pressure on himself as it is. Which then leads into what I talked about before. How he sort of lets the media get to his head. So that might happen even more now. Because people are going to be expecting so much more of him. Now that Pierce isn't there. But yeah. Next season, I think they will struggle to make the 8. I think they'll be one of those teams that sort of finishes around the 10th to 12th region. Yeah. Uh, that's just me. Like, you know, they might do better. They might get one or two more signings that really push them up the ladder a bit more. But yeah, for me, next season, they're a 10th to 12th. For me. All right, but yeah, you know, only time will tell. Who knows? They might surprise me. Maybe, you know, maybe Adam O'Brien will bring in someone that can set up a defense like a god. And, you know, they won't concede any tries. You know, or they'll concede minimal tries. Right? But, you know, only time will tell. All right, but yeah, guys, that's my um, Knights 2021 season review. Sorry if you can hear my dogs in the background. Um, but yeah, like with all these, let me know if there's anything I should add, remove, you know, anything you liked about it, disliked about it, let me know all of it, I'd love to hear about it, you know, I just love talking league, let me know your opinions on the Knights, how you think they did this season, you know, how you think they'll do next season, yeah, but yeah, um, with that one guys, yeah, uh, take it easy and, uh, yeah, have a good one.